by the time you get to your fourth pregnancy, you're like, I don't have time for fluffy do's and don'ts. I need to know what is an absolute yes and an absolute no. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to actually be sharing things that I am and am not doing because I'm actually pregnant. It's still kind of like crazy to think that we're in this place. For everyone new here, my name is Dr. Nicole. I'm not only a pelvic floor specialist, but I'm also a mom of two toddler boys and I am newly pregnant. So I am going to be following all these do's and don'ts right along with you. So one of the things that you might not have thought of when you think about the do's and don'ts, and I can't say this is like going to cause direct harm to your baby because I don't think there's evidence out there to support that just yet. Um, but something that I think is kind of important not to do is to keep your cell phone on your body. So I used to work at the hospital during uh, my first pregnancy and because I was big and couldn't wear many other scrubs, <laughs> this is what I wore before I was pregnant. I would always just take my cell phone and put it in my pocket and I would carry it around with me because it was easy to see what time it was, to time sessions and things like that. But when I got pregnant, I was like, you know, that's like really close to baby. Uh, especially being right by my belly. And I just, there's a lot of things that this emits that I just don't really want all up in me and my baby's business. So I started putting my cell phone in cupboards, uh, keeping it in my locker downstairs, doing other things with it so that it wasn't like on my person all the time. I've heard a statistic that it should be at least an inch from your body at all times, which means if it's in any sort of pocket, it's probably not far enough away. Two more things that I wanna make sure we're not doing when we're pregnant is this one's probably pretty obvious, but I feel like it wouldn't even be a complete list of do's and don'ts if I don't at least mention it. Drugs and alcohol. This is one of my favorite wine glasses from my friend's bachelorette party, and I do miss it, and sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, I drink apple cider or something relevant to the season out of it just to make me feel a little less sad. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I am not someone who drinks nightly. I don't have a glass of wine or whatever, but for some reason, when you can't have something, you just want it really bad. And especially, let me just tell you, if you have toddlers or kids at home and you're pregnant, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. They are so crazy at dinner time. Like, I think they're hangry maybe. I don't know. They just like stand at my feet and cry. It's just, it's really, really awful actually. And the amount of times that I've thought, if I just had a glass of wine, that would make this all better. Drugs and alcohol, not, not good during pregnancy. So don't do that. Something else that maybe is less obvious, but also important is when we think about eggs. Now, not many of us are going to be cracking an egg open and pouring it into our morning drink. I mean, I think some people do that, but definitely not me, and I'm guessing not most of you as well. For me, the hardest thing to give up raw eggs with is cookie dough. I seem to always find a way to be pregnant over Christmas. And one of our favorite things to do as a family is to make Christmas cookies. The sugar cookie dough is like my all time favorite. I like can't wait till we get to the end and there's not enough to make a cookie. And I of course get to eat that part. I have learned to share a little bit with my kids now, <laughs> but I definitely really love eating cookie dough. I'm not gonna say that I have never eaten cookie dough while pregnant, but I really, really try not to. The thing is with eggs, they could contain a bacteria such as salmonella, which if we cook it thoroughly, we shouldn't have to worry about salmonella giving us, um, totally blanking on the word here, food poisoning. Salmonella causes food poisoning. If we cook eggs, it has a very much, much lower risk of giving us food poisoning. And our bodies just happen to be really, really susceptible to food poisoning. And it can actually be pretty dangerous for us and baby if we get bad food poisoning during pregnancy. It's the same reason they say we shouldn't eat raw lunch meat is because there is a high likely or higher likelihood of it having the bacteria salmonella and causing food poisoning and the whole thing. So if you're going to eat raw lunch meat, you just wanna make sure that you, just like eggs, heat it up, cook it, make sure it hasn't been sitting out all day. Actually, I ran into this lunch meat situation during my last pregnancy. <laughs> I happened to be pregnant for two out of the three weddings I was in last summer. And I, the thing to do when you're getting ready for a wedding is to make sure that the bridal party has like something to eat so they don't go all day without eating. And a lot of times the choice is subs, which are amazing, especially when they get Jimmy John's. The choice is like not eat, be really hungry, pick off the meat and like really not get very much nutrition out of my sub 
or take my chances with the sub because I knew it was fresh, it had just gotten there and kind of hope for the best. And so that's a call that you'll have to make. For me, it was like, I think eating this sandwich and the nutritional value that this sandwich is gonna provide for me and my baby is more important or less risky than the chances of me getting food poisoning. So I went for it and thankfully I have not had any run-ins with food poisoning and hopefully that will continue to be true. There's actually quite a few foods that we aren't supposed to eat during pregnancy. I'm not even gonna take the time to get into all those in the video. I'm gonna leave this up to you guys. Go ahead and throw in the comments some of the foods that you've heard you can't eat during pregnancy so that that we can have a complete list going on down there. I'm not big on telling people what they can and can't do in the kitchen because I certainly am not perfect when it comes to eating. I am not a nutritionist, dietitian, or anything of the sort. However, what I do know is that during pregnancy, you really don't want to be eating for two. I have definitely use that card to be like, I need ice cream because the baby is saying that it wants ice cream. <laughs> but the truth is during our first trimester, we actually don't need any extra calories to take care of our babies. During our second trimester, we need about 340 extra calories, which is an apple and two tablespoons of peanut butter, just for reference. And then in the third trimester, we need about 450 extra calories per day. This would be that same apple and two tablespoons of peanut butter plus an egg or plus an ounce of almonds or something. And so that's really not all that many calories. And also probably worth noting is that all calories aren't created equal. So like a 200 calorie cookie is not going to be as nutritious or filling for you as let's say almonds or an apple or something like that. And then the other trick here is making sure that instead of just having bigger meals for those extra calories, really thinking about snacking throughout the day. So I'm a huge snacker anyways, because I just don't like to be hungry and I feel like I'm always hungry. What I like to do, I'll eat a bar in the morning when I get up with the kids between six and seven. I'll eat my breakfast after I work out around 9.30. If I'm hungry around 11, I might have something like this trail mix in an apple. And usually if I do that, I'll eat a later lunch, like around one o'clock. Then when the kids get home, I usually wind up snacking something with them. And then we have dinner. I try to avoid the night snacks because more often than not, it's something like chips or pretzels or something that actually wasn't that good for me anyways. <laughs> the other great thing about having snacks throughout the day is that it will make sure that you don't get to that hangry stage. Hangry is really bad when you're pregnant because if you have any bit of morning sickness, it is only gonna be accentuated or worse when you get that like empty stomach feeling. This is why a lot of people have, well, I guess this is why they probably call it morning sickness because when you wake up in the morning, your stomach is completely empty. And if you get up and start moving around without eating something, oftentimes your nausea just goes through the roof and this is when you end up throwing up. I had a best friend that definitely did this because her morning sickness was so bad. She drove everywhere with a trash can in her car because it was just so unpredictable. She found that having some kind of a trail mix or a bar right on her nightstand that she could just eat as soon as she woke up before she even started moving around really helped kind of settle her stomach a little bit. Some crackers, just something so that your stomach isn't empty and that you can make it until that breakfast time without having so much nausea and throwing up because that is just not any fun for anybody. Fortunately, in the kitchen, there happens to be more don'ts than do's, so let me grab something here. Fish, let's talk about it. Most people get really scared about fish during pregnancy. They hear that you shouldn't have fish, it contains a bunch of mercury, and this is gonna be really bad for you and the baby, so just stay away from fish. This is actually not true, so maybe this will be good news. You do want to eat fish, actually. Fish like tuna and salmon actually have a lot of really good things in them. Omega-3s, I believe. Back check that one. Yes, omega-3s are what is in a lot of fish that are really good for baby's brain development. So it's totally fine and probably recommended that you eat some fish. Obviously you don't wanna eat it like three times a day probably. The things that you do wanna worry about when it comes to fish are one, raw fish. So if you're a big sushi person, you're gonna to have to stick with, is it the California roll? Honestly, I'm not a big sushi person. What you do wanna be worried about when it comes to fish is the amount of mercury in it. And I know I just said you don't really need to worry about mercury and that's kind of confusing, but the thing is some fish has more mercury in it than others. Things like tuna and salmon don't have that high level of mercury in them. If you are someone that has shark, swordfish, king mackerel, other bizarre fish like that on a regular basis, you're gonna wanna cut back. <laughs> but for me, they don't sell those things at Aldi, so they are never ever in my freezer, nor have I ever even ate them. <laughs> so a lot of times what everyone's so concerned about about fish isn't even really a concern because it's in those really rare fish things that 
we just don't actually eat that much of. And finally, some good news while we're in the kitchen, something that is going to be much less restricting. <laughs> Although it's probably not as fun as you were hoping. Something that you do wanna do, at least I do it in the kitchen, but I guess your vitamins could be anywhere, is making sure you're taking your prenatal vitamins. I like to go with something that is more of like a food-based um, prenatal because I think that's something our body can absorb the most of. I make sure that I take my vitamins more regularly than I do when I am not pregnant because I just know how important it is for baby. Dental hygiene. We've got to talk about it. If we're going to talk about pregnancy do's and don'ts, we've got to talk about why you have to take care of your teeth. <laughs> so I think we all grew up learning you need to brush your teeth at least twice a day. You need to floss. And if you're anything like me, the flossing takes a back seat sometimes. <laughs> but when I'm pregnant, I really, really try to make extra effort to floss my teeth and be really faithful with my teeth brushing. And the other really great thing to do is try to make it to your dentist every six months, if possible, at least once a year. I pretty much do everything they suggest. I'm not a big fan of x-rays when I'm pregnant, so I do skip out on those, but I try to make sure everything else happens while I'm pregnant. We have so many new hormones in our body, and these hormones actually can affect our gums a lot and our teeth, so we're more susceptible to gingivitis because of those hormone changes. This is why we often see that our gums bleed, which is another reason a lot of people are like, I don't wanna floss because they bleed almost, almost every time I floss. Uh, but that's actually even more reason to floss is because your gums are just way more susceptible to gingivitis, which is going to obviously cause lots of bad things to happen in our mouth and not going to be good. If you do throw up a lot during your pregnancy, you have that acid that comes from like deep down in your stomach and every time you throw up, it's getting all over your teeth. I think most of us probably wanna brush our teeth after throwing up anyways, because it feels kind of nasty inside. Um, but it's really important to brush your teeth after throwing up because that acid on your teeth is going to cause them to break down. It breaks down the enamel and then you're more susceptible to cavities and things in the future. And that is why dental hygiene is definitely on my top five list of things we do need to be focusing on when we get pregnant. When it comes to exercise, as a physical therapist, it would be crazy if I said I didn't think you definitely should continue to exercise during your pregnancy. The official ruling from the Association of OBGYNs um, and all things pregnant doctors, <laughs> pregnancy doctors, I guess, is that you should be exercising at least five days a week at a moderate intensity. For me, realistically, what that looks like is about three or four days a week of like a planned workout where I'm really working pretty intentionally, pretty hard. I like to do lots of YouTube or um, online workouts. I work out here at home. And I do that about three or four days a week. And then on that fourth, fifth day, depending on how good my week went, that's when I focus on movement outdoors, walking with my kids while they are in the stroller, or riding their bikes, different things like that. Or, you know, walking around our woods where we live, maybe some yoga and stretching, things like that. Just movement at least five days a week. I get the question a lot of times from clients is, is it really worth exercising if I know that during my pregnancy, I'm gonna just gain a bunch of weight no matter what I do. And uh, then I'm gonna have this postpartum healing time and I'm not gonna be able to work out. Is it really worth all my time and effort to be like working out during pregnancy? And hands down, every time I say yes, and this is from personal experience and from all the clients that I've worked with. The people that work out before pregnancy and during their pregnancy have such a stronger foundation. It's like they have muscle memory, their muscles know what to do. They can get back into shape, they can get strong, they can prevent aches and pains much more easily postpartum than those women that just took nine months off or never worked out at all. So even if you've never worked out before and you just were looking for the right type of motivation, this is it because now you're not just working out for yourself, but also it's very healthy for baby for you to be exercising and getting that blood flow. Another thing people ask me a lot is what kind of workouts should I be doing? So this has looked a lot different for me during each of my pregnancies. For my first pregnancy with my son, Obes, I did a lot of running, maybe a little bit of strength training because my sister was like, you really should be strength training. And I was like, as a physical therapist, I know that's true, but I don't really like it. Second pregnancy, I had a one, one and a half year old throughout. I was working full time at the hospital and I was just like, nope, this is not gonna work for me. <laughs> so I worked out like here and there, but really not diligently focusing on it. 
But this pregnancy, with the way my job is now, I have a lot more flexibility. I have made working out part of my daily routine, three to four days a week, like I said. And I am focusing a lot more on strength training because I've learned how much benefit there is to being strong. It prevents um, aches and pains. And we all know that during pregnancy, we're gonna have a lot of aches and pains, especially back pain. But if we have a really strong core, strong butt, we can prevent some of that pain. It's also going to help prevent diastasis recti or prevent it from getting worse. Definitely got some with my last son. He was enormous and I did not do my strength training as diligently as I could have during pregnancy. And so if I want to make sure that doesn't just like split wide open and I can fit a whole fist in the gap, I really want to make sure I'm focusing on core strength here. And the other thing about strength training is that it is just going to be something very sustainable that I can do throughout all three trimesters. If I do something like running, when I get to that third trimester, I'm not gonna lie, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. It just feels like this big belly is just like so heavy as you're running. The other thing is our body releases this hormone called relaxin during pregnancy. It makes all our ligaments really loosey-goosey, which is great for delivering a baby. Also makes us a little bit like Gumby <laughs> when we're running and it just strains our joints a little bit more. I often advise women on ways that they can modify their workouts because yeah, you can't lay on your back during pregnancy. You can't necessarily use a bar and weights the same way when you have a big belly. So there are modifications that need to be made, but it's definitely possible to keep strength training throughout your entire pregnancy. We've got a couple bedroom do's to finish off our list because what would one of my videos be without talking about things that happen in the bedroom? It just it feels right. Two things that I do recommend that you do during pregnancy are make sure that you are listening to your body when it says that it's tired. Now I know if this is your first pregnancy or you're thinking, why am I so exhausted and tired? I'm barely showing. I haven't gained any weight. Like there's no reason I should be this tired. But anybody that's had pregnancies before knows that the fatigue is so real. And honestly, for me, this is one of my most severe um, pregnancy symptoms in the first trimester. So I totally get it. If you feel like you need to go to bed at 6.30 p.m. because you're just totally exhausted, do that. <laughs> if you feel like I need to take a nap when I get home from work because there's just no way I can make it through my evening without taking a nap, do it. If you're like, I need to play games with my kids where I'm laying down, pretending that my body is a literal ramp for my kids while they drive cars over it, do it. You are going to be exhausted in your first trimester. You're growing a life. You're growing a baby. Like there are so many things going on under the surface that we just can't even see or don't think about. And that is why we're so tired. And the last do for this video is going to be so on brand with everything that I am about here. I was thinking about closing out with like, make sure that you do drink a lot of water, but that seemed too obvious. Like you guys already probably knew that. And also it just wasn't really me. So the last do for pregnancy of this video is going to be do have intercourse, do it. Okay, so some people get really, really worried about can I have sex while I'm pregnant? Is it okay to have intercourse? During the first trimester, they're worried about, is this going to cause miscarriage? Is this going to do harm to my pregnancy? No, it absolutely will not do those things. Some people are worried during the third trimester that they're literally going to poke their baby. And no, no, you will not do that. That is not possible. Unless you have a medical condition, something like um, a incompetent cervix or something where your doctor has actually said you cannot have intercourse during pregnancy, you have medical risks, there's medical complications, this is a little bit more rare, um, then you should definitely follow their advice and not have intercourse. But for most people, sex is totally fine during pregnancy. I think it's recommended because it's actually going to relieve stress, release endorphins, and we need those things during pregnancy. Pregnancy is really hard. It's filled with a lot of ups and downs and it's emotional roller coaster. It's physically challenging. It's just, it's a lot of things. So if you want to make your life just a little bit more happy and you traditionally like intercourse and it makes you happy, then you should keep doing that during your pregnancy. I'm gonna point you to this video over here if you have more questions like how exactly does that work and are you sure that's safe? I answer all those questions in this video over here. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing pregnancy and thank you so much for being part of my journey too.